So today I'm joined by my TA Indiana because this problem was all his creation. He knocked a Rubik's Cube off the table, half the pieces went flying everywhere, and what's left is the drawing that we're gonna make today. The good news of this drawing is that since every line on the orthographic projections is horizontal or vertical, that means that all of our faces on the isometric drawing are gonna be horizontal or vertical as well. So no inclines, no obliques, no triangles, just a bunch of rectangles. The bad news is that this drawing is really tricky. It's hard to tell based on these combinations of visible and hidden lines, which of these square features are sticking up and which of them are sticking down as holes. When starting an isometric sketch, there's always two steps I do right at the very beginning. The first is to determine my overall strategy for the drawing. That is whether I want to do mainly an additive style or a subtractive style. For this isometric shape, a subtractive style would look at one big block with a rectangular hole cut out of it. An additive style would look at this as one shorter block with two smaller blocks stacked on top. Either one will get you to the correct answer, but as you're making an isometric drawing, it'll change the sequence in which you draw each line or each feature. Some problems are far easier to do one method than the other. For this wedge on top of a wedge problem, it's gonna be far easier to do in an additive technique. But for this Rubik's Cube problem I'm drawing today, it's gonna to be far easier to do it subtractive because I know the overall size and shape of the outer rectangle, then I'll just need to figure out which of the little small square boxes on the inside have been removed. Then the second thing I'm gonna do is draw a bounding box. My bounding box is drawn in orange to simulate it being lightly penciled in because at the end of the drawing, a lot of this is gonna end up being erased. So you don't wanna draw it in too dark from the start. You get the dimensions for your bounding box from your orthographic projections. And the purpose of drawing this box is to make sure that your drawing is scaled appropriately to fit the page. The worst thing that can happen is you spend a long time making an isometric drawing and realize your scale is too large. And by the time you finish, it doesn't actually fit on the page. It overlaps off to the side or top or something. An isometric drawing are deceptively tall. This vertical distance is way taller than the horizontal distance of the isometric drawing, even though it's a cube. The main challenge for this drawing is that you can't tell by looking at a single perspective whether shapes are protrusions or holes. And to look at an even simpler example, look at this square within a square. Based on this one top view alone, there's no way to tell whether that inner square is sticking up out of the smaller square, or whether it's a hole sunk down into the square. You need to match up that small square feature on the front view to see whether it's sitting on top and visible, or whether it's sunken in and hidden. The key to a complicated drawing like this is to save those ambiguous parts for later, and to first look for features that are completely unambiguous that you can definitely know what's happening. And looking at the top view, the first thing I see are these two empty squares at the bottom right. Those are definitely cut out holes, and so I know that that section on my isometric drawing is going to be completely removed. So here I start to draw in that feature of these two blocks being subtracted. So if these two green squares are essentially extruded as a whole straight down to remove this section, the blue lines are basically what you're left with. And now I erase part of my bounding box for that front right corner because I know that section is cut out. I see a similar feature looking from the right view as well. And now since these green squares are also clearly cut out as seen on the right side view, can redraw that front section as only one square on the top left sticking outwards, and the rest of that front sided face is just completely flat. Staying on the right side view, looking at these shaded faces, since there's no visible line separating them, they should be one flat face all connected to each other. And that means the two green squares on the right are gonna have to get pushed inwards to be flat against the one in the back. So an overall status check right now, looking at the right side view, all three visible sections now do match up. The empty section on the bottom left, that section shaped like a seven in the top middle, and then that four Tetris piece on the bottom right. It's not clear yet what those hidden lines are gonna be, so let's shift to looking at a different view and come back to those later. And from here, I'm looking at the front view, that very middle square. From the front view alone, it's ambiguous whether this is sticking outwards or is pushing inwards as a whole. And now that we've already removed the two squares in front of it, we can see that it has to be a hole all the way through the center of this block. And I don't think I see anything obvious still missing, so let's go back to the front top and right side views and see where we stand. These three green faces match the visible faces shown on the top view. These four shapes match the four visible shapes visible on the front view. And these three green shapes show that we've accounted for all visible lines on the right side view. And there's still hidden lines on all three views that are not represented yet on the drawing. 
The easiest one is going to be the front view hidden line. It can only be accomplished by removing this bottom back piece. Now removing that piece did help us out on the right side view because now this hidden line exists based on removing that block. So the only thing left is the one hidden line on the top view. In order to get this hidden line, there has to be something missing beneath this green square. And there's only two choices, either the block in the middle or the block on the bottom or both. And we can tell which by looking at the right side view. If either the top or bottom were missing, then there would be a hidden line in the middle of them visible from the right. Since there is no hidden line there, that shows us that actually both blocks are removed. And that leads us to an isometric drawing in its final form. So we're done. Last step is then just gonna be to darken all of these permanent lines and erase any stray marks or portions of the bounding box that are still left over. And now that you've finished an isometric drawing with all normal surfaces, that is they're all horizontal or vertical, now you're ready to move on to inclined surfaces, which is gonna be like triangles, wedges, and ramps. And this video that I linked here is a pretty challenging example of that, which has cutouts through the inclined surfaces. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.